What's up, guys? Welcome back to Barfly Freeport. Today, we've got a really special episode. We are teamed up with the Brooklady Distillery to taste through their new Octomore 11 line. This is a really nice fall seasonal release, and it is a limited bottling, so we're really excited to get into it. So normally in a video like this, I would take you through the entire history of the distillery and everything I know about the spirit. Uh, but I'm not going to do that today because the main point of this video is to help them promote a series of articles written by 11 influencers that goes through everything. It just does a deep dive on uh, Brook Laddie, their history, the distillery, everything about their process, um, everything about the Octomore line. And I really want to push you guys to go read that because it is amazing. And uh, I went through all those articles and really learned a lot. So today what we're going to be doing is just tasting through the line. There's uh, three different expressions that we're going to be tasting through, and I'll just kind of just kind of go through that with you. Because you really understand what differentiates Octomore from other Isla Scotch, you really need to dig into where it comes from. Octomore was created in 2002 by then master distiller Jim McEwen, and it started with the question, what if? What if we took the smokiest barley that we have and we distilled our scotch from that? At the time, the thought process was that just distilling something from barley that smoky would make an unpalatable scotch. And so Octomore at its core is a very experimental whiskey. That said, Octomore takes its name from the amount of PPMs that the barley is rated at. So PPM stands for parts per million. And to really understand this whiskey, we need to understand what that means. PPMs is the measure by which they determine the smokiness of the barley and therefore the smokiness and peatiness of the scotch. The higher the PPMs, the higher the peat and smoke inside the final distillate. Just to give you a reference point, Lagavulin is at 35 PPMs. Lafroy, which is something that we use a lot on the Educated Barfly, is at 40 PPMs. And then like 40 to like 50, 55 is sort of where all of your, uh, you know, Lafroy, Ardbeg, Kilcomen, all of these scotches kind of fit in that range. And so then you can get a sense of how peaty and smoky the Octomore is gonna be now that it hits 80. So Octomore starts at 80 PPMs. That's actually where it gets its name for, Octo meaning eight in Latin. Um, but it actually ranges between 80 and 309 PPMs and each expression has a different smokiness rating. So the last thing that we need to understand before we actually start tasting the Octomore is the numbering system on the bottle. As you can see here, there are numbers on the bottle and they signify pretty much what expression of Octomore it is and then what's inside. Um, as you can see, it says 11.1. .1. So the 11 is that it's in its 11th year. It's a, the 11th expression since they released the first one in 2008. And then the 0.1 tells you what's in the bottle. So we know that this bottle uh, is comprised of 100% Scottish mainland barley and is uh, primarily rested in ex-bourbon and whiskey casks. So let's get into actually tasting it. So the first expression that we're gonna be tasting today is the 11.1. .1. It is aged five years. It was rested in first fill ex-bourbon casks. The bourbon casks came from Jim Beam, Heaven Hill, and Jack Daniels Distillery. It is 59.4 ABV or 118.8 proof, and it retails at about $160 a bottle. So on the nose, I really get definitely some peat and some smoke, honey, heather, apple cider, fresh apple cider, or maybe fresh pressed apples. What's kind of nice is that the smoke doesn't really kind of blow everything else out. You have all these nice sweet notes, maybe honeysuckle or something. All right, let's taste it. Oh wow, that opens up nice though. Now, I mean, obviously you get this like, this massive flavor right in the front of your palate. You get a lot of smoke, you get a lot of peat. But what's nice is it has this almost kind of sweet, almost caramelized honey, or uh, even like ripe, you know, kind of like, like almost like a sharp fruit flavor. I just said ripe and sharp fruit, which is like two opposite things, but I can definitely taste honey in there. Definitely honeysuckle. It's got kind of almost like a, a little bit of a floralness sort of underneath. A little caramel. You know, I, I actually didn't even mention this. 
uh, but this is at 139.6 ppm. So what's kind of remarkable about a whiskey like this is that you would think that it would just blow out your palate with uh, peat smoke uh, earth. But, you know, what I think is kind of remarkable is that you get all of those like really nice sort of fruit flavors, honey flavors, a little caramel. Um, it does not have that sort of iodine minerality that is typically thought of when people think of Isla whiskey. So people think of whiskey from Isla, that sort of minerality sort of goes hand in hand in people's minds. And this is just, you know, so much to the other direction, but you have all of that like smoke. And the other thing about the smoke is that it's not like a bog smoke, but it is like a campfire kind of smoke. It's not like a cold smoke, it feels very warm. It's really nice on the nose. It's so inviting. You know, and although it's big on the palate, it, it is very a very smooth pour for something that is at 118 proof, you know? So this is kind of a proofier thing. And you would think to feel some heat, and you do a little bit, but it's not, it's not harsh on the back of your throat as you swallow. Uh, so there is the 11.1. Uh, Let's get into tasting the 11.3 next. And what makes this different from the 11.1 is that it is 100% Isla grown barley from the Octomore farm. So this is a whiskey that is really all about the terroir of Isla. It's, it is the Octomore's Octomore. Uh, it comes in at five years of age. It is a uh, first fill ex bourbon cask. 61.7% ABV, which comes in at 123.4 proof and retails at around $225 a bottle. All right, after a little bit of water, let's taste this next one. So what's kind of interesting about this one is that the smoke and the peat is still there. It's prominent, but it's not as prominent as it was in the 11.1. .1. This is a lot more subtle. I get a lot more sort of pear and sort of apple vibes, followed by honey, maybe a little bit of caramel. Really nice, bright, almost citrusy in its character. Let's see how it is on the palate. Ooh, so this one is like almost candy going down. It's This is at 194 ppms, so that gives you a, a, a an idea on the scale of smoke that it's at, but it's it's very subtle in its kind of peat and smoke. It does have that nice smoky character. Again, there's none of that sort of minerality or iodine flavor that you get in other Isla Scotches. It's very bright, very citrusy, very, very nice. Um, again, this is even higher proof uh, expression, and yet it's very smooth. Uh, it has a little residual burn, but just on the front of your palate, as it goes down, it's really nice and smooth. What's really nice is that it goes in, so like as you swallow, it goes in sweet and then it opens up to this sort of campfire smoke right on the back of your palate as you're swallowing. It has a really nice long finish. Both of these had really nice long finishes actually. It has a nice long finish that just like continues and kind of continues and kind of continues. It goes and goes and goes, which is really nice. I really like whiskeys that sort of have a medium to long finish. To me, it's a little bit disappointing when it's on your palate and then the and then the flavor is just sort of gone uh, as quickly as it came. That is wonderful. That, that I gotta say, is one of the, my favorite whiskeys that I've tasted so far. So for the last whiskey that we're doing, we're doing the Octomore 10. It is in a virgin oak first and second fill ex bourbon cask. Comes in at a uh, respectable 54.3% ABV or 108.6 proof and retails at about 225 bucks. All right, so on the on the nose, I get a little like fresh orchard fruit, maybe a little apple, like apple cider. We get that peat and maybe kind of like a wet earth sort of smell. Maybe even a little touch of chocolate. Oh, it's nice. What's not, what's great is that like the the peat though is like it's there but it's underlying and it's not so prominent. All right, let's see what it is on the palate. Oh, that opens up. It's really nice and big. And it's a little bit proofy, but it's not like super hot. 
And what's funny is that, again, you, you get the peat and you get the smoke, but it's not the most overwhelming flavor. You get this really nice kind of fresh fruit, sort of apricot, maybe a little white chocolate. Very approachable, very drinkable. You know, it's drinking like something that's a little less proofier than what it is, but just kind of really nice. It's really nice and smooth, very drinkable. And now I'm getting that peat. Now I'm getting that like peat and smoke, but you know, it's kind of like a campfire smoke. It's not like a cold sort of smoke. It's like a nice warm sort of campfire smoke. And peat's really nice too. Uh, not overwhelming. It's just really blended in with the, the flavor profile. And then you still get all of those nice fruits kind of throughout with a really nice finish. It's a really nice long finish. Uh, so there it is. I don't know why I put this aside. The uh, Octomore 10 year. If you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships. We've got cool stuff going on there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on another time. Leandro out.